and welcome to this self-learning series for Control and Workload Manager Automation Products. My name is Mark Dominson and I'm a lead technical support analyst for the InControl mainframe products. This is one of a series of self-learning videos that are designed to help you with your day-to-day -day tasks with a family of products. The title of today's video is Express Install, Installing Control D, Control V and Control M Analyzer. In this video, we'll be looking at how to install Control D, Control V, and Control M Analyzer using the new Express installation facility provided in Release 700 and above. This video will show you how to install Control D and Control V using the new Express installation process, which is available from Release 700 onwards. The Express installation process is recommended when you want to complete an installation in the quickest and simplest manner. The screen that you can first see here is the initial screen once you've invoked ICE for the first time. So from here we just select the installation option. The next couple of screens are concerning license agreement details and you need to confirm it before you proceed with the installation. next screen is where you enter the environmental details for the installation you're about to perform. For the purpose of this install, the only real change I'm making is to the storage class for SMS so that I can allocate the files where required. Hit the enter button to validate the details on the screen and PF3 to save the details. From the next screen select the express installation option and from the next screen the interactive installation option. The next screen that presented is where you enter which products you are going to install and how large you would like the database files to be. The database files can be small, large, medium, extra large or reference. Reference means you can take the size from an existing install. So from this screen I'm going to select Control D with a small database and Control V. Once again, hit enter on the screen to validate the details and PF11 to go to the next screen. The next screen that presented again provides you with a number of default parameters that are provided at install time, which you can change should you wish to. For this install, I shall leave them as they are. If you get, to, you can scroll down the screen using PF8, and once you're happy with these parameters, hit PF11 to go to the next screen. This next screen shows what they call long parameter data entry which is concerning job card details and also data set naming conventions of all the files that the installer is going to create. Again you can PF8 to scroll down and change any of these parameters as required. Once you get to the bottom of the screen again PF11 to scroll forward to the next screen. The next screen shows allocation attributes entry screen. This is where you can change how your files are going to be allocated. For the, for the purpose of this, I'm allowing SMS to allocate all of my files so there are no changes required. Once again, you can PF8 down the screen to change any parameters required. And when you reach the bottom, once again, PF11 to scroll forward to the next screen. At this stage all the parameter input is now complete and from here onwards everything is automated and there's no more required input to the screens. Select the Y option to continue and hit enter and you now see the automation process starting. Uh, it will verify the parameters just like it does in a, in a regular installation the other thing you'll see on here is that it does a small internal test 
to make sure that the installation process can submit jobs in the background and also check them afterwards to allow it to complete to the next step. The process you're watching now should take about five minutes, bearing in mind that this is dependent on the size of the database files that you're allocating. All of the messages that are written on the screen are also written to a log file in the background. So should you have any problems, you can always have a look at the log file to see what was occurring during the install and if there are any problems, what the errors might be. This process is not restartable, so if the process fails for any reason, the best option is to delete the complete install and start from the beginning again. As you can see, the inputs of the parameters is fairly quick, so this shouldn't take you too long. You can now see that the IOA installation is complete and the process is going on to start the install of Control D. As you see from the messages on the screen, the Control D installation is now complete and the installation of Control V has started. And again, once you look at the messages on the screen, you can see that the installation is now finished. At the end of it, you will get a message to say whether the installation ended with success or unsuccessful. At this point, this part of the installation is now complete. By hitting the PF11 button as instructed at the bottom, you will be presented with a few instructions that you need to perform to complete the installation before going on to customising it. This includes APF authorization of the screens, applying security if you need to, uh, editing password files, and any other tasks that may be required to complete the installation. And I hit PF3 and the installation is complete. 
So from here onwards, if you need to make any changes, you can go into the customization for the product and make any changes that may be required. This is the, this is the end of the video. Thank you.